Ugh. I am not looking forward to making this video, and I've already restarted it like three times, but, and I was supposed to leave for work like 10 minutes ago, but I just needed to force myself to sit down, put the camera up, and make the video. <laughs> so there's been an overwhelming amount of questions and comments regarding Elliot and like what happened to him, you know, what's going on, how are we where we are right now, which is in a very good place. Um, so I figured it'd be easy to just explain it the best I can. Shut up, phone. Um, you know, to the camera rather than trying to reply to every single one's comments, which is a lot. And I'm not saying the comments are a bad thing, but it's just a lot to reply to. Now, I will say I've been very vague about um, everything that's going on with Elliot because I can't answer every question, and even if I were to, it would fuel more questions and more judgments and just everything under the sun. And personally, I can't handle that. <laughs> Um, I do work a lot and I go, I have classes and all that, so I just, I don't have time to reply to all the DMs, all the comments, everything. So I figured it'd just be easy to explain to you guys face to face. <laughs> Where does this all start? Probably March 23rd, 2012, when my lovely problem child was born. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, probably October of last year, I went to visit Congress and I wasn't showing or anything, I was just watching for the first time. And um, I came back home. And I went to visit Elliot in his stall, and his leg was like a tree trunk. It was so swollen. It was just, he was, I don't know if he was lame or not. I think he was a little bit lame, but he wasn't like dead lame. It was very, very weird. Um, anyways, long story short, he had a strained tendon and was on stall rest and all that for a couple months. And I believe it was February that he came back into work. Totally fine, 100%, cleared by the vet, all good. Well, late March, definitely, I think these things were definitely going on in May, because that was Novice Championships. Um, but we had gotten to a good point where he was like, at a good point where I felt good about showing Novice Championships. But anyways, these problems started to spike up. He was very back sore, just very grouchy in general, didn't want to be groomed, um, kept tossing his head, and like... I was kind of borderline like is this behavioral or is it pain? I know the back pain was a separate issue so we did get another saddle and I got this saddle spe specifically fitted to him and all that and the head tossing. I was in the middle of switching trainers so I was like starting to kind of schedule with this new trainer and it was just this whole big thing. Anyways, my main concern was he was a little bit off in his hind end. I didn't want to call it a lameness because he wasn't lame, he just he wasn't tracking up quite right. And so I called my vet, and um, he wasn't terribly concerned about it. I was asking, you know, should we think about injections? Like, is something wrong here? Um, and he he, he kind of just pushed it off. Like, he didn't really think much of it. Um, well, we kept on going, and right, it was like I gave Elliot the week off after Novice Championships, and that week back, we had a, week, we had a show maybe three weeks after novice so I started riding him again after his week off and it was bad he he is not a bad horse in any means he just has a lot of energy that he doesn't really know how to get out but he doesn't have a mean bone in his body and he was rearing and bucking and just an absolute terror and I was like this is not my horse something is very wrong here um, so we started investigating everything and I don't, it was this, it was kind of this weird period of time where, um, we got the saddle fitter out again, we got him, he got chiropractically adjusted, I think it was before Novice Championships, um, but we were just kind of, like, trying to figure out what the heck was wrong, and on, oh gosh, what month was it? It was either June or July, no, it was, it was July, like mid-July. I was going to work, and I work at like 2, so I, and it takes me about 45 minutes to get there if I stop for lunch, because I'm a fatty. And so I left about 1, and I always like check on the horses on my way out, because like the barn is on the way out of my driveway. Anyway, so I stopped Chick Waters and everything, and I had ridden Elliot that morning, because he was doing a little bit better. Well, I found Elliot, and there's some videos on my Instagram, but I found Elliot in this drenched, just drenched in sweat. Like, it was almost, it looked like I had turned him out in 90 degree weather in three heavyweights. He was drenched in sweat, like dripping, and just, he was screaming, pawing like crazy, just 
and whites of his eyes were showing he was in an absolute panic and like he paused sometimes if he's hungry or like bored in the cross ties but he was like going at it like something was wrong and he was like digging a hole to china and he'll quit if i tell him to but i was like screaming at him and he was not stopping and um so i pulled him out of his stall and my first instinct was like is this some weird sort of colic like what on earth is going on so i took him out and i was just walking around and he wanted to graze he was grazing he was trying to eat his hay he wouldn't eat his dinner um anyway so my parents weren't home and so i had to make the decision i tried to call my vet he was out of town and so in my panic state i didn't listen to his entire voicemail and his voicemail said like if you have an emergency call this other vet and so I didn't hear that. <laughs> and so I went into this full panic mode and I started calling vets in the area and said, how fast can you get out here? My horse is something's very wrong. And I also thought he couldn't pee. Like he kept stretching out like he had to pee, but he couldn't pee. And so, and he's the kind of horse like you have to drug him to be able to clean his hoo-ha. And so he hadn't had it cleaned and it wasn't, it really wasn't that long. But like, I was like, okay, maybe he has a bean or something and he can't pee. So I was like, I called this other vet and I was like, look, I don't know if my horse has a bean or if he's colicking, but something's very wrong. I need an expert eye on him now. And so this vet came out and scoped him, or not scoped him, rather. Um, I can't find the words. Anyways, did the whole thing work up for colic. Tubed him, that's the word I'm looking for. And um, did that whole work up and said, okay, and he was drugged out his wahoo mm, he was drunk <laughs> anyway so he was like okay so when he wakes up from the sedation um give me a call and we'll see where he's at like did, did that help at all well before like he said give it an hour for the sedation to wake up wake up wear off well like 30 minutes later he starts into this panic again and so i call the guy back well he's like his shift was over so i have to have this other bed and i'm trying to talk to her about what's going on i was trying to say you know do you need to come out here or do I just need to take him to the vet school right now? And she was like, well, you know, I can come out there and tell, tell you can you to go to the vet school. So I think personally, I think she was new or something. She came out here and she, she looked at him and he's like a pretty chunky dude. Like he's got some muscle on him. And she looks at him and she goes, see a quarter horse? I'm like, yeah. She's like, this is HYPP. And I'm like, it's not how it works. Like, yes, it's a quarter horse thing, but not he doesn't have HYPP and um anyways so and that's a genetic thing like it's not anywhere in his papers it's not anywhere in his history it, that and that's not what an HYPP he HYPP attack looks like um and so you know we had to pay her trip charge and that was just a whole mess I'm still upset about that um anyway so we ended up taking him to the vet school we pulled in there like nine o'clock at this point um, at night, I called my boss and she said, absolutely don't come in. So that was a relief. Um, anyways, and so we took him to vet school. They also were, were kind of suspicious about colic. And I was like, I don't, I really don't think it's colic at this point. Um, but they did a full workup of everything. He stayed there overnight. Um, long story short on that one, they did a whole bunch of tests. I initially thought they did a PSSM test because that was on my like radar screen and I thought you know here's a building full of vets and um, vet school students like that would be on their radar screen too and they said they did blood work so I was like okay so they probably tested for PSSM well come to find out they didn't and you know it wasn't um, he tested negative for EPM which would explain, you know, the weird tracking of his hind end. And at this point, when he was at the vet school, we started talking about all the weird things that have been going on with him the past couple months. Um, and so we were starting to tie everything together, like, oh, maybe this little episode thing has to do with all this weird stuff that's been going on. And so we were trying to tie all that together. He tested negative for EPM, negative for West Nile virus. Um, what else did they do? They said his back pain was so bad that they could lay a hand on his back and he would like almost fall to the ground. That's not exactly accurate, but whatever. Um, anyways, they did a full body or full spine rather um, radiographs 
and long story short again they we basically had no answers at that point and we were loading them on the trailer and the main vet was like oh i mean we could test them for lyme disease you know if you just wanted to throw another thing out there and i was like at this point we are so far into the hole with bills and everything else sure go ahead just spend my money <laughs> and anyways so he did test positive for Lyme and so all that money at the vet school <sighs> anyways still upset about that so I was trying to talk to my vet about you know what else could be going on and I started to get really irritated because he wasn't really acknowledging my ideas that something else is going on here could it be this and honestly you know I'm trying to do my own research I'm trying to learn I'm this is my horse this is my pride and joy down here yeah I kind of want to figure out what's making him be in pain and so he was kind of I don't know I was just kind of bothered by the fact that he wasn't really interested in figuring it out like I was anyways and I know he has a lot of other clients he's also a small animal vet so he's got a lot on his plate but I just wasn't getting the right vibe so I started using my trainer's vet and he came out and he was the first one to confirm my suspicion of a stifle issue because every once in a while while I'm lunging him, I can see his stifle kind of catch. And it'll happen like when I'm riding him, his, it's like his hip gives out. And he's also got this huge issue of toe dragging. Like he, you can see it on his back toes. He's got all these marks because he can't, he doesn't like pick up his foot all the way. He just drags it. Um, anyways, and there's a whole bunch of other issues. So he was the first one to confirm that. And um, so when I took him to my trainer's, yesterday which that's another announcement um but I took him to my trainers yesterday and we got him um we got his stifles injected we got him um Adequan injections which are consecutive so you know I just have to give him those um and then he's going to be starting a growth hormone on I think he starts it on Thursday whenever he starts back into work after this little break from um after the stifle injections because he gets like six to seven days off um but the growth hormone basically just tightens up his hind end um so it just like i said i'm not good at explaining things um i also don't remember what it's called but um i can't say those fancy science names anyway so yeah that's where we're at now oh the other thing i didn't mention is um when the vet school took the radiographs both them and my trainer's vet that I showed the radiographs to found a spinal compression at C3. Now that we don't really have any answers for right now. Um, it could be affecting him. It may not be. Right now it doesn't look like it's affecting him at all. Um, but it is there and it could get worse when he gets older or it could just be there and not do anything. And that came from growing too big too fast. His dad is very small. His dad's like a 14-3, 15 hand uh, pleasure horse. Elliot is almost, he's about 16 too now. Um, he's almost full grown. And yeah, so that's there. Um, the only thing we can do for that is a $25,000 surgery that has a 50% 50, 50 success rate. So we will not be doing that surgery, um, especially if it's not showing any signs right now of affecting him. But that is there. Um, and what really kind of hit me right in the gut is when we were at the vet school, they found that spinal compression and instead of looking further into it, they looked at me and they said, um, you know, you might want to contact your insurance company about collecting uh, mortality insurance on this horse. And at that point I was a complete mess because they basically just told me, you know, collecting mortality insurance didn't mean that I was ha gonna have to put him down, but it would mean that he's done at five years old. I would have to retire my five-year-old. And my five-year-old that I put literally everything into um, has been my entire world for the past three years. Um, and that we had, you know, plans for Congress, World Show, everything on him, he was done. And so I wasn't happy with that answer, obviously. So we looked into it more. Um, I'm so glad that we did because obviously it's not as big of an issue as it was originally presented to me. Um, but it is something that we still have to be aware of. Um, and yeah, I don't know if I ever, ever explained the PSSM thing. Anyways, the PSSM thing, um, I'm sorry, I, 
I've been thinking about how to explain this video and like it's been such a long few months it's hard to just sit down and put it all into a couple it's probably been a lot of minutes by now um, but anyways the PSSM thing we haven't even gotten him tested yet because my original vet never really pushed the issue um, but right now you know all of my pennies are going towards his stifle injections and Congress and all that and his other like the medical treatment that he needs um, but the PSSM thing I'm planning on having him tested as soon as I have a little bit extra cash um, but basically it's essentially equine diabetes and so he has a high sensitivity to sugars and starches and he can't develop them correctly in his muscles or can't um, utilize them correctly in his muscles and so he ties up he um, has all these issues so he is on a special diet he eats tribute essential no he eats tribute calm and easy <laughs> um, which is a low sugar low starch feed he's on alfalfa he gets his hay soaked um, he's on minimal grass all that stuff so he's being managed for it right now and has been doing really really well on management alone um, but I do plan on having him tested sooner rather than later As for the Congress thing, this is a really long video at this point, <laughs> um, but as for the Congress thing, so we are going to Congress in October, we leave in 27 days to be exact, um, and it hasn't really hit me yet because I dropped Elliot off at my trainers last yesterday um, because, you know, after these very eventful past few months, I wanted him to have the best kickstart, best boot camp that he can have. Um, so he is there for the month and of course I'm going to be visiting him as much as possible. I'm actually going up there tomorrow. I'm thinking about vlogging it, but we shall see how busy I am. Um, anyway, and so he's up there. He, they're taking excellent care of him. Like I could not wish for any better at all. Um, and I know everybody, I mean, my trainer's there. I know the barn manager. I know a bunch of people there. Um, he's in fantastic hands. Um, Anyway, so we will be showing in the novice and youth equitation, hunter, saddle, and showmanship. So, and we did, we sent in the entries while Elliot was being treated for Lyme disease in hopes that he would make a comeback and be able to go. Um, but, of course, it's not non-refundable. So our plan was, you know, if he's not physically ready to show, like, he doesn't have the stamina and all that, we'll just go up there, show showmanship, have a good time, <laughs> um, and call it a day. But it looks like he's going to be physically ready to go, but of course, still playing all that by ear. And yeah, Whew. so I hope I got everything in there. Um, but like I said, obviously, that was a very long video. So trying to explain all that in, on Instagram and answer questions and cut assumptions and accusations off at the knees has been a full-time job <laughs> um so please understand if i don't answer your dms and everything on instagram i have a lot a lot of dms coming in and they're not always things that i can answer so if you have any other questions regarding elliot please avoid from making avoid making accusations or assumptions ask questions. I'm the only one that can tell you the facts about my horse, so just please respect that. <laughs> um, but feel free to comment and uh, I will try. I don't have my notifications on on YouTube because that would be really annoying, so I try to go on and check every couple days if there's any questions I can answer. Um, but as for that, yeah, I guess this is a, <laughs> the whole Elliot being a Joy's thing, or my trainer, um, I can try to make more YouTube videos, and I don't know if I can film my ride so much. I can probably try to film uh, her riding him. We shall see how that goes. But I really appreciate you guys sticking with me through all this. It has been a mess, <laughs> an exhausting mess at that. And I'm hoping we can only go up from here. So thank you for all the support, especially when I announced the Congress trip. You guys are the best, and I'm hoping that this all turns out well. I hope that answers y'all's questions, and I hope I will have another video out soon. Thanks for watching!